What does this look like to you? Yeah, these are stepping stones, right? So um, I didn't take this picture. I just Googled stepping stones. But the reason why I like this picture, and I want you to have it in your mind if you want. I'm not even going to try. I could draw a bad converse shoe, but I am not artistic enough to draw this. So I'm not going to, but you can, all right? The reason I want you to have this image in your mind, okay, is that in maths, we often learn something, and we use that kind of like a, well, as a stepping stone to get to new knowledge, right? Every time you learn something new, you think, oh, where can this take me, right? What can I do next that will help me expand my understanding? So I want you to think, have you got the image in your mind now? You thinking about stepping stones? I want you to think about what we did on Friday. There were two particular skills that we learnt under the heading of index laws. Does anyone remember? Can anyone tell me what one of the skills was? We used it in the review question. Say, Andrew. Okay, if we multiply, and you might even have this written in your book, right? If you multiply two numbers, and this is really important, their bases can't just be anything, right? What's the relationship between the bases? They've got to be the same, as you saw in the examples, right? They've got to be like 2 and 2, or 95 and 95, they've got to be the same, right? If we multiply, then what did we do to the indices? We, yep, you add them, very good. So this is what happens when you multiply. And then there was like the flip side, right? What happens when we not multiply but divide, right? What was the uh, index law that we established? Yeah, Bravi. Okay, what are we going to subtract? M from N. Yeah, the first power index, take away the second one. Okay, now, Luis, did you have a question or a thought? Can you get a negative? Wow, that's a great question. That is a fantastic question. I like it so much that I'm going to hit pause on it because we're going to come back to that idea. But actually, I would love it, and maybe you want to do this as well. I'd love if you jot that question down. I don't want to forget that question. I like it so much. I'm going to say, I'm going to write it up here just for myself because I don't want to forget it and I have a memory like a sieve. And we'll come back a bit later on, okay? Now, each of these two ideas, skills, multiplication and division, we're going to use each one as a stepping stone to some new knowledge, okay? So the first little subheading that I'd love you to make um, under today's work, which I suppose you could call index laws continued, because we're going to continue thinking about them. The first little subheading is what we're going to call power of a power. And if that doesn't mean anything to you just yet, don't worry. We're going to explain with the thing that we write underneath. So. To understand what this means, right, we know what powers are, like this. A power of a power looks something like this. If I had, say, 2 cubed, I could raise this to another power. Like, there's already a power there. And then I could say, for example, take a power of a power, okay? So, I know some of you immediately are like, I know what to do with this, okay? Before we jump to that, I want us all to think about, if you do know the answer, why is the answer what it is, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Do you remember when we established this, right? I actually made us all sort of write out in longhand. Do you remember? I said, hey, what's this? What's it actually longhand for? Uh, it's two times two times two, which of course is equal to eight, right? But this is actually the meaning of it, okay? Uh, sorry, this is the longhand, this is the abbreviation. Okay, now in the same way, you may be able to jump to the answer immediately, but that's actually not what I'm interested in. I want to try and learn something from this, right? What does this mean? Not what's it equal to, but what does it mean? Merrick? So basically you have a power of five times everything in a bracket. Okay, pause right there, pause right there. You're already starting to get me to the answer. And I want to know what does this actually mean so that I know why the answer is what it is. Um, Just hold there. Louise, you put your hand up. What are you, what are you thinking? Um, Like in brackets, kind of? Yeah, okay, so Louise is talking about getting some things in brackets. Can someone pick up from here? Do you want to pick up from where Louise is going? Cube times two cubed times two cubed <laughs> times two cubed times two cubed. Okay, we got there, right? This is the thing that's in the brackets. Why did we do it so many times? Because. Because. because yeah, that's, that's what that five means, right? It's like one, two, three, four, five. I can count, we can count. Fantastic. Okay, Merrick? Why can't we just do like eight straight away and do eight times eight times eight times eight? Okay, you know what? We totally could say, I know what that is, that's eight. And then I could do, this is also eight, and eight, and eight, and eight, and eight, and that's fine. But we're going to notice something different about this 
that makes it easier when we just leave it as a two rather than as an eight, as you'll see in a second. We're gonna use this as our stepping stone, right? We know what to do when we're multiplying things that all have the same base. What happens to the indices? We just read it right here. Yeah, go ahead, Hen. Yeah, I'm gonna add the indices together. I've got three, plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. Can someone tell me what we get? When you add three together five times? 15, very good. Two to the power of 15. Now, here's why I didn't write it just as eight. Okay, do you see there's a relationship here? What are you seeing, Louise? So do you just do three times five because that's in the Right. So have a look here, right? You can see I've got the two cubed and it's to the power of five. So just like we saw before, if you've got another color, this might be handy, right? The three and the five, they combine together. We don't add three plus five, we... Yeah, we multiply, right? We times, three times five gives us 15, right? So this is really, 2 to the power of 3 times 5. Does this make sense? So power over power, right? This is something bigger than just multiplying things with powers. We're taking things with powers and raising them to powers. So that's why it's called power over power. How might we write this in summary form? If we took some number, which was raised to a power, and then we raised that to another power, right? What would the answer be? We're going to start with A. The base will still be a base. But what do we do with the powers? Yeah, go ahead. A, a um, to the power of M, plus, M times N. Plus. Very good. We nailed it. When you are raising a power to another power, you don't add the powers, you don't subtract, you multiply the powers. And this is why, right? Seeing it in longhand shows you, yeah, it's like 3 plus 3 plus, you get to 15. Okay, so this is what we, call, we mean by a power of a power. You can put a nice big box around that, okay?